talk about in a moment, but he even paused the video on the live reaction to start attacking Christians. Let's listen. No! Christianity is a child molester's religion. Literally. Christianity is a murderer's religion. Christianity is an adulterer's religion. Christianity is a thief's religion because you don't have to have works. Now, today's video isn't about this. I'll continue showing you how he exposes himself in a moment, but let's take a 20 second time out to deal with what he just said because it was so off. This is what we call a straw man, which is arguing against something the person didn't say or didn't mean because I do not believe the man was speaking about not doing works as a Christian, but he was speaking in the context of not needing works to be justified. There's a big difference. And this is because no informed Christian would say, don't do works. And this is clear from passages like Romans chapter 6, verse 1 to 2, which says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Up until this point in Romans, Paul is explaining how you are justified by faith in Christ. And to make sure you don't think how Gorilla just argued, Paul asks the question that comes up when you realize what being justified by faith actually means. Now, what if I'm saved by faith without works? Does this mean I should live a life sinning like I did previously? But Paul emphatically answers, God forbid. You see, once you are justified by faith as a new creation in Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are going to produce works. This isn't hard to understand. But let's see what they say. Matthew's red letter, Matthew 16 and 27. Mm. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Time out. Do you see how the co-host there was emphasizing red letters? And this is the problem with people who have tears of scripture. The red letters are written by someone inspired by the Holy Spirit to write red and black letters, not just the red. It's scripture or it's not. How can you trust the red letters to be genuine if the black letters by the same men are not? This is why it doesn't make sense to pit scripture against scripture. You have to accept everything or reject everything unless you believe it's not inspired by the Holy Spirit. But something Gorilla Hebrew said can actually put us back on track with today's video and digs the grave for them even more. And it's something Hebrew Israelites say all the time. But let's listen. What did Matt tell me, Assad? I don't, I know, no, because I have Paul. <laughs> and this is why today's video is so important because it's another example of someone other than Paul slicing up their false teachings. But like I've shown in the past, and like you'll see by the end of today's video, read the comments and you will see it doesn't matter what book in the Bible you mention. It doesn't matter what testament you quote from. If it doesn't line up with their belief system, they will reject it most of the time attacking me saying i hate my own people or i work for the white man blah 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 what's he talking about right here james yes what individual is he using as an example what biblical figure he brings in abraham from james chapter 2 as an example of somebody who is justified this is why he asked the man who is this speaking about but gorilla continues and says so the quality of your faith cannot be substantiated unless you have work the quality of your faith cannot be substantiated or proven unless you have works my disciple he's going to speak for you before the most high meaning you're not going to, you're going to be exempt from judgment you're going to get the white stone and this is why they bury themselves because verse 24 of the same chapter he's using from james says likewise james says just like i told you abraham was justified so was the non-Israelite Rahab the Canaanite justified too. And this destroys a core teaching of many Hebrew Israelites that only Israelites can be saved. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to you, brethren, you fellow believers of this faith, and Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom to the elect, peace to you. So anyway, this video is bought by, what's this screen name? His channel is In Thy Word, talking about exposing Hebrew Israelites. Well, finally, somebody didn't put black Hebrew Israelites, so that's a good thing. Exposing Hebrew Israelites with their own words, Sakari Hebrew Israelite exposed. So I just kind of want to go in here. This man, he's he's a devout Christian he really believes sincerely believes in what he believes it just doesn't make it right and this is the problem that we have with Christians what I've heard him say it ain't about any works it's all about faith but you know when you go to a job they require works 
and it requires some form of faith and belief that you can help this company. They even ask you questions. How can you help the company? What will you do to make this company a better company? Will you be dedicated? Will you be faithful? You know? So this thing go hand in hand in our life. You know, the scriptures also says, be good soldiers of the Lord. The scriptures also says, present your bodies as living sacrifices. Um, Romans 12 as well. So there's various, various scriptures. But I want to go more into this, what, he, um, what he's talking about in James with Rahab the harlot. Right? A lot of people just read it and they just think, uh-oh, everybody's going to be saved. Okay? Anyway, let's go with this. It says Romans 2, Salakia, James 2, and uh, 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with this his works, and by works was his faith made perfect. Right? It's kind of like even when you work out and you trying to you're trying to set a goal, you need a form of faith to get to that goal, but you gotta work, right? But you have to have faith and mental strength to believe, hey, I'm gonna get there. Right? And this is how it's working with us. It says, And the scriptures was fulfilled with saith Abraham, believeth Yahweh, right? And it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of, of the Most High. So why was Abraham? Because you go back to Abraham and Isaac, right? When he was going to sacrifice Isaac. It just wasn't time for Isaac to be sacrificed. I mean, that's a little deeper going into who Isaac actually was coming all the way up to Yahweh, which is the actual sacrifice. But Abraham had faith in, in believing what he was told to do. And Abraham, by his works, was going to do it. Right? So let's go on down here and get to the point. Ye see how man... Uh, how that by works a man is not justified and not by faith only, right? See right here? So you, you had Israelites who was all about the works. This is why Yahweh Shah came on the scene. This is what I got to keep bringing up. Yahweh Shah came on the scene, the one you call Jesus, is to bring us back to the glory, right? To our glory. And through him, through faith, through him, because what we was doing is we was going on a carnal mindset and we were just following laws, even and making them up as we go along. We was being wicked by the law. So this is why Yahweh Shah did that with the blind man in John 9th chapter when he um, also, when he got down on his, got down and rode in the ground on a, um, when he said, cast not the first stone. Right? That's is bringing us all these things and him dying for us is to bring us faith and mercy. We need faith. Right? But what did, what did Jesus say? Yahweh Shah say? He said, think not, I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. And what did Yahweh Shah come for? He came for the will of his father, for the Israelites. That's why he came, for the, for the Israelites. How much more than we see in him doing these miracles and actually believe in, in the most high. Because when you're just going about doing something and it's not growing and you're just consistently just doing something out of just to be doing it to, for power and control, you've got away from the most high. And Yahweh Shah has brought us back to that. But anyway, let's go on. It says, Ye see then how then that by works a man is justified right, um, that a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and had sent them another way. But see, by them works, by hiding them out and everything, talking about the spies, she had faith. Does that mean she's saved? her household, right? There will be other nations. And if you read, if he read Jericho, he would understand that there were 
um, other people who wanted to come up under uh, the Israelites to be spared because they knew that the Lord was with the Israelites. The same thing is coming in the kingdom of heaven. Other nations will come up under us. What's, up, what's, what's wrong with that? See, the mindset of these guys and maybe the black militant Israelites is to say that uh, all will be destroyed and we just be the only ones in the kingdom. No. We're going to be the heads of the kingdom. We're going to be running the kingdom of heaven. Right? But you got to have, let's go on, let's go to Apocrypha real quick. Let's go to 2nd Ezra 6 and 59. We can even go to 54, but I just want to get to the point. And now, O oh Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, as we, if you read up, says they were nothing, have begun to be lords over us. Wait a minute. This is all about racism, nation, uh, uh, nationality, and devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called by the, thy firstborn, the only begotten and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess the inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So this is clearly telling you that the world was made for the Israelites' sake. And, you know, we can go to Amos 3 and 1 if, you know, they don't want to go in Apocrypha and say, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. So the Lord has never lied. Malachi 3 and 6, the Lord has never changed. Let's get a little commentary on this too. Um, it says, Rahab the harlot, right? She did a good thing. What was wrong with that? We're not saying that. There, there, were, there was heathens who recognized the, the, the God of Israel right you read the bible but they can't be israelites and they won't get the promises it's okay it's okay for edom to have his part in controlling the world controlling jake being lords over us nobody got a problem with that nobody says he shouldn't be over us we should all be equal nobody says that when it come to them it's only us it says uh, Hebrews 11 and 31, which we get that real quick. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not, right? When she had received the spies great uh, peace, right? And what choice did she have? She had a choice, but the Lord put the spirit on her, right? To hide them out because it was a greater thing. Now, when you go to what Mo, I think in the book of Numbers, Moses, the Lord told Moses to the Midianites, if I'm not mistaken, that he said, go and take you all the women that had not laid with men. It's in the book of Numbers. And what would they be taken for, <clears throat> right? And these were heathens. So some will submit, some will have to be taken, right? So... You don't think any heathen would have did whatever they could to hide them, uh, hide them spies out? What if heathens helped the Israelites out uh, today in the last days? You see what I'm saying? So they're not, they're not getting saved. But when the kingdom of heaven come, yes, we will have concubines, right? We'll have women of other nations, servants of other nations. It's just what it is. Anyway, let's read on. It says, when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way, her receiving them implies likewise, her hiding them both, which together, both which together with her sending them forth another way were, were acts of love to the people of God. Notice how it said to the people of God. Okay, the people of the Most High, who mercy to the uh, of mercy to the spies, and of great self denial in respect of our own safety, right, which was hazarded by thus exposing herself to the fury of the king of Jericho and her countrymen, 
but all proceeded from her faith in the God of Israel, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, of whom great works she had heard and whom she had now taken to be her God and under whose wings she was now come to trust. So when the kingdom of heaven is established, there will be other nations. You know, now Edom, you know, as Obadiah 1 says, uh, um, shall be for stubble, but you're going to have other nations who's going to serve under the children of Israel. What's wrong with that? <laughs> All nations doing it for this man now. That's just what it is. You know, it is it's nothing, no, no extra special privilege where now she's now an Israelite. <laughs> it's either you're an Israelite or you're not. That's why in Amos 3 and 1 it says, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. But for whatever reason, Christians believe that God just decided to change his mind. Anyway, let's get some more. Matthew 16, 24. Then Yahawashah, they say Jesus, said unto the disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Right? Take up his cross. What does this mean? Let's go here. It's a lot on this. I'm going to just get to the point. Let him take up his cross and follow after me. Uh, it says, let him take up his cross, G4716. Right? It says, a known instrument of ignominious, ignominious punishment, borrowed from the, the Greeks and Romans. Phoenicians, okay, it goes on to say a crucifixion and uh, it also says basically when you're going down to it, basically you're suffering. Appointing one used to such offensive uh, palisades. The crucifixion which he underwent, right? The G, the basis is G2476. It calls to make a stand, to place, to stand in the presence in the midst of judges, right? And that's what's going to have to happen, Revelation 2 and 10. So you're going to need works, right? But you're going to need faith, and they, they go hand to hand. Uh, this scripture also says that ye be not slothful, this is Hebrews 8 and 12, uh, you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience. So we see here faith and patience. And when we see um, patience, it means endurance, consistency, steadfast, long suffering. You had to have works to do that, man. See, the Christians, they, they want a way out, right? They don't want to do the hard work. They can't show us where Yahawashah sinned, which they know he didn't. At least they, some of them are saying he he was off. But where did he go off on his dietary? There was times it was said about the honeycomb and the fish and the honey, right? And the certain things that he ate, what he drank, show us where he went off. Now we also, I want to go back to, to the fact that we are to follow him, meaning we're not supposed to uh, uh, follow the ways of the heathen. We're not supposed to follow the ways of the gods. This is what Yahweh was all about, to bring us mercy. Because guess what? If he didn't die for our sins, we would never be able to make up for the wickedness we've done as a people, as a nation, in all our lives. So this is where the mercy come. Yahweh never came for us to say, you know what, forget the loss. That's why he said, I come to do the will of my father. What was the will of his father? To give the children of Israel. So you mean to tell me Moses came with the law and the children of Israel had a law. Of course, they messed up. But now to bring us back to law, we decide, the Lord decide, well, forget the law. They weren't right by it anyway. We just need to drop it. That would make the Lord a liar, number one, and one who is not standing by his word. We all need laws. It's a shame that these people follow all the laws in this society 
but they won't follow the laws of the Bible. And this is why our people are all destroyed, man. They all messed up. Yahweh never said to do away with any laws. He was the ultimate sacrifice. But guess what? We're still presenting our bodies as living sacrifices. We are to take up our cross and follow after him. And what, would, and what is sin? He said, no, we should not sin. Well, what is sin? Transgression of the law. But through faith, we will be saved. I'm not knocking that out. We need the faith. This is the Lord saying the most high, pretty much, do as I tell you to do, but love the Lord with all your heart and your might and soul and strength. That was even from the beginning. He was calling for faith back then. Anyway, that's all I have on that. Shalom.